Fresh Coast 40K fans, we've got something real special for you today. Uh, because uh, Brian is still in town for the auto show, um, we decided all to get together on a Sunday night to uh, do a little Adepticon prep. So you're going to see all four of our team members. We're going to show you uh, our proposed 1,000-point sections, talk a little bit about why we chose uh, to bring these units, uh, what we think is so special about them, and uh, maybe I can just get a preview of what's to come in April. So I'm going to start us off and we'll get a good look at my Adepticon army. All right, here it is. 1,000 points of orcs on bikes with a little bit of flyer support. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Zadsnark the Ripper um, because I need uh, a, uh, a war boss that unlocks bikes as troops. Uh, so at 150 points, he's just brutal. He's got twin link big shooters uh, and the power claw, of course, that strikes at initiative. Uh, he is absolutely nasty. Um, and he's going to be flanked on both sides by 12 biker boys, completely full, uh, loaded out mobs, uh, uh, knob with boss pull, power claw on each one. Uh, and then to back them up, we're actually going to use a Burna Bomber. And I like the Burna Bomber because of its uh, ignoring cover AP4 missiles. Um, yeah, they're a little inaccurate, but you know what? With blasts hitting everything uh, at full strength, um, I think it's going to be able, uh, I, th I think it's going to do some damage against uh, stuff hiding in cover. So we'll see what it can do. Um, and that's it. That's my thousand points worth of boys. So we're going to go look at, at uh, my teammate uh, for today and see what he's going to bring. By the way. Um, I am using the, the four-story slot that has the, the fortification, uh, but none of us really care for it all that much, and it's, it's an awful lot of points in a thousand-point list to dedicate to a, an anti-flyer uh, shot from the last cannon or auto cannon. So um, in order to open up the other spots for my teammates, I have the, uh, the fortification list. But of course, you know, bikers and troops. All right, High Fleet Muggus is going to come out to play for Adepticon. Uh, he's also, Mike is also going to be my teammate for today. Uh, we have a Turvagon as an HQ, and he's going to be using the Biomancy powers. Uh, as his only troop choice, he has this uh, Termagant Brood right here in front. Uh, Mike is going to be taking our Elite's heavy section, uh, because the Tyranid, list, or Tyranid uh, book is full of elite, so elite choices that are great. Uh, and he's going to focus primarily on some shooty, excuse me, on some real shooty Tyranids. Uh, two squads of two Hive Guard. Our Impaler cannons are quite nice at, uh, at popping light vehicles um, in a pinch. Not too bad against anti-aircraft. Um, good, uh, all around good shots. But the the main focus right here, if you ask me, is this brood of uh, three Carnifexes, all with twin link devourers. A pair of twin link devourers each. That's going to be 36 twin link shots at strength six coming at a unit. This is his uh, unit deleter. Um, not much, not much lives after being shot at by that thing. And they're 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 pretty resistant too. So uh, the term uh, the term against back are just the babies for the uh, the turbo guy. So we will start talking about some tactics once we get uh, get deployed. But let's go take a look and see what uh, Adam and Brian are bringing for their team. All right, here's the other team. Uh, this should be pretty familiar from the last bat rap I shot. This is uh, Brian's Necron force. We've got a, an Overlord, um, War Scythe, Resurrection Orb, Mind Shackle Scarabs, and the 2 Plus Armor. Uh, there's a Lord on the other side, it's identical. Uh, they're each going to be joining a squad of 10 Warriors. There is a, uh, a, a line of 7 Scarabs that's going to be our Speed Bump slash uh, Anti Land Raider capability if we need it. Um, the uh, the Doom Scythe in the back with the, uh, or sorry, Knight Scythe in the back with the, uh, the 5 Warriors, and there's going to be another late objective grabber. But the, the key to this list is the five destroyers in the middle. And a lot of people don't like destroyers, but Brian has been using these guys for years, and he's been using them very, very well. Uh, and he's a smart guy. He does the math hammer, and um, it's pretty hard to, to deny what they can actually do if used correctly. And believe me, he knows how to use them correctly. So uh, we'll get a list, uh, we'll get a, a real close look at what they can do today, uh, and uh, hope they stay away from you know, my boys as much as possible. So let's see what Adam's going to bring for his towel. All right, Adam decided to throw me a curveball. Um, for today, he is actually going to be using the fortification list, uh, which you know doesn't matter to me because my list is perfectly legal for all four of them. Um, but this is again, we are kind of play testing our designs. Uh, he has two lists today. This is the one he wants to try out. So we have Commander RLI, the Forge World model, um, a squad of Fire Warriors, and a, a squad of uh, Croup for his troop choices. Battle suits with uh, plasma rifles and missile pods. Uh, what are they? Shield drones or gun drones? Excuse me, gun drones. Uh, and a, a squad of three uh, broadsides with some shield drones. Shield drones and yep. the commander can split fire. And this, the commander can split fire. That'll be helpful. And then he's going to be taking an uh, Aegis defense line with uh, quad cannon. 
Uh, pardon the Blood Angels paint scheme. He is painting one up for his Tau as well because that's you know Adam is a, a very completionist kind of guy, just like most of us. Um, but yeah, again, the idea behind this this force is going to be stand and shoot and uh, wipe out some uh, units with the uh, um, the battle suits. Uh, I, I hate those things. Every single time he plays them against me, they, they usually uh, take out my Marines pretty easily. Um, but hey, with everything in my army having a cover save of four up right off the bat without a, even uh, moving. Um, and a lot more survivable. Still has a lot of dice coming their way. So we've got two shooty lists together. Uh, let's take a look and see what... Uh, uh, oh, we already looked at Brian's list. I'm sorry. So we'll just move on to a deployment. All right, here we are after deployment. Uh, the mission is Big Guns Never Tire. There are five objectives. We have one, two, three in the woods, and then one, two in the buildings. Um, we set it up, uh, Mike and I kind of deployed everything on this half of the table towards where Adam and Brian were because we don't plan on sitting still. Uh, so we're going to be trying to, to roll over that way and they're going to be trying to hold the line as much as possible. So it will be pretty cinematic. Um, but yeah, we've got the bikers and the nids in a nice big red line here. And then everything kind of hiding behind the defense line on this way. Destroyers, fire warriors, uh, battle definitely suits crew back here. Yeah, they're definitely hiding. We've got the broadsides in the building. Um, that quad gun sitting right in the middle. All right, so uh, Adam and Brian have the first turn, unless uh, Mike and I want to try to seize, and night fighting is in effect. Are we going to seize? Yeah, we'll Go for it. No. We do not. All right, so we'll tune, uh, tune back in after the top of turn one. All right, top of turn one was a pretty effective round of shooting for Adam because uh, just about all of his Tau units ignore night fighting. He put a hurt on this uh, unit, of, uh, unit of bikers. I believe seven of them went down. Um, I made one cover save. That was it. It was just a real bad round of shooting for me, or uh, of uh, saves for me too. The one cover save I did make, make was on my war boss. So they passed their leadership test. They're still good, um, but everything else is untouched, including all of Mike's stuff. So let's see if we can't uh, do a little bit of striking back in uh, the bottom of turn. Right, one. Bottom of turn one. Uh, my boys moved into the uh, the woods here to uh, be near the objective because my war boss's warlord trait gives them feel no pain when uh, they're within three inches. So that. Hopefully, it would keep them alive a little longer. Uh, everything kind of just moved up into a big mass. Uh, template weapons would be scary right now. Um, I did uh, take some shots at the, the Necron Warrior unit uh, on that objective in the woods. Dropped four of them with the, the bikers here. And uh, they promptly broke and turned around and are running away. Um, but three of them stood right back up. So grand total, we're down seven bikers. And they're down one Necron Warrior after one turn. All right, let's move into two. All right, top of turn two was, uh, again, pretty effective uh, shoot, round of shooting for the, uh, the Necrons and Tau. They dropped this biker mob down to the war boss, put a wound on him, and one boy left. Um, oh, I accidentally pulled the knob off there somewhere, so uh, um, that was a, a mistake. Uh, anyway, uh, the other thing that happened, the flyer came on, took some shots, did, I think, a single wound to a Carnifex, and then the rail guns did another one. So that Carnifex is down to two wounds. And notice there's no more scarabs in the middle. Uh, Brian was going to try to tie up my other biker mob, but assaulting into 12 orc bikers, get, getting 36 uh, twin link snap fires in return, and then going yeah, and then going at initiative three, uh, which is higher than his initiative two. Um, I dropped him down to one scarab swarm by the time he was able to actually swing with that swarm, and then my my knob cleaned him up. So we got first blood. We're now winning uh, one nothing, yay! But uh, we're gonna see if we can't do some uh, do some damage in this turn. All right, bottom of two uh, saw a little bit of a um, little bit of payback. The uh, burner bomber came on and just is gonna skirt the back edge here so it stays out of the uh, the range of the quad gun. Um, that way it can't get interceptor fired this turn. It's just gonna turn up field and uh, hopefully go for a bombing run next turn. Um, over here, the war boss and his uh, two buddies. Shot uh, RLI's drones out from under him, and then uh, popped his wah. Managed to get in there without needing a fleet roll. And uh, RLI challenged him. Then the war boss said, okay, and uh, ate him alive with uh, a couple power claw hits. Um, over here, we, uh, we thought we were going to have another uh, pretty spectacular moment when the, the 36 shots from the, the war bikes dropped four of the destroyers. Uh, three of them got back up. And then I needed an eight with a fleet roll, rolled a seven. We rolled that three and we, uh, got a one, so they failed their uh, their charge over here. So the, the destroyers stay alive for a little longer. And Brian's dam will be back rolls. So he, he made another three here, and he made uh, 
Uh, all three of the ones he had to yeah. he had to take right here. That's okay. it. Oh, and this unit of uh, battle suits is uh, fleeing. They lost their buddies. Yep. And their drones, them. their drones died, and they failed their, their morale check. So, <laughs> otherwise, uh, we're pretty good. Oh, and the other thing, the, the night scythe was blown up by the uh, DAC effects. It's pretty spectacularly. They had what, uh, fourteen hits, three pens, three glances. On six. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. All right, so we're going to move into turn three. All right, my, uh, my orky pain continues, as does my run of horrible cover saves. Um, you know, Brian was, was griping about the, the, the math of me blowing down, blowing down four of his destroyers in one round of shooting, but um, I don't think anybody can deny that the amount of 50-50 uh, cover saves I've failed today have been bad. Made up. Um, yeah, more than made up for it. I have one knob biker left um, with one wound, and uh, he had to use his boss pole to stay still. Um, and he, he, had, he killed uh, the, the last boy he had in his squad. So we have a knob biker and the burn bomb, and that's it for the boys. But the Tyranids have taken a grand total of two wounds and a couple of uh, termagants. Uh, let's see if we can't get them into the fight, though, please. <laughs> you know, help me out here a little bit. I might have overextended a little bit, but that's what, boys, uh, what uh, orc bikers have to do. Um, so we're going to move into bottom of three. Uh, we'll turn the burn bomb up field and see what it can do. Alright, bottom of turn three. Um, my last knob biker skirts around the woods, shoots at the uh, gun emplacement, and then assaults it, blew it up. So my burn bomb is feeling a little safer. Speaking of the burn bomb, it came flying down the flank, uh, dropped a couple of scorching missiles, uh, had some uh, big shooter and uh, super shooter shooting on the, the warriors in the, uh, the trees. Uh, the Gants, the Termagants shot it. I believe one of the Hive Guard unit also shot, and they managed to knock all the uh, the warriors out and drop the uh, the Lord, the Necron Lord in there. He got back up with his reanimation protocol. Um, but now we have a couple questions. One, does uh, the Resurrection Orb four plus work on reanimation or on uh, Ever Living's reanimation protocol rolls because he was down? And two. Uh, does the orc knob get a, uh, a consolidation move for blowing up the gun emplacement um, because it's not a vehicle? So go ahead and put comments below. Uh, we hope to hear a lot from you guys. And uh, we're going to move into the top of turn four. Top of turn four, and uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to say it to jinx ourselves, but I think the tide is turning a little bit. Um, I did lose my knob, so I'm down to just the burn Obama. Um, but other than that, we lost a single hive guard. And that was it for this entire round of shooting. Nothing else came in to, uh, to do any damage. So um, we'll see if we can't uh, try to delete a unit with uh, Mike's Carnifexes and uh, keep pushing towards these objectives. All right, bottom of four. Um, pretty much everything concentrated their fire into this Necron Warrior squad. Uh, thanks. Uh, okay, we'll be back. Well, Brian got three of them back up. We failed to knock them all down, though. That was the goal. We'll try to get them all taken out. Um, the, the Scorching Missiles... Took out a couple, uh, as did the uh, the uh, Carnifexes, but yeah, they, they managed to stand right back up, so they're still okay. Um, but Tyranid Horde is moving pretty well. We're moving to turn five. All right, top of turn five, uh, we see the uh, uh, the push towards some objectives. The Necron snap fired and took uh, one hull point off the Burn Obama with a uh, uh, a glance from a Goss weapon. And then uh, I believe one squad of Hive Guard was taken out, or one, excuse me, one brood of Hive Guard was taken out. We're getting picky on uh, nomenclature here. And yeah, there were several, uh, several Termagants taken out as well. But our lines are still holding, and we are still pushing forward. So we're going to move into the bottom of turn five. All right, bottom of five, Tyranids keep advancing. Um, the uh, Burner Bomb did a bombing run over the Crute, and then uh, shot some with the turreted um, big shooter. Uh, they are breaking and running. The Carnifexes opened up on the Fire Warriors and killed them. And uh, that's about it. We're ready to keep pushing on the objective with the Carnifexes, as they are a scoring unit. So, let's uh, move into turn six. We did roll. We do have turn six. All right. Top of turn six. Uh, shooting. Uh, I guess uh, shooting attacks took out some more of the, uh, the Gaunts. The uh, Destroyers decided they were going to get fancy, moved around the, uh, the barricade and shot and assaulted it into one of the Termagant units to try to knock him off the objective. Um, lost one to Overwatch, got in, and because they were within uh, distance of the, uh, uh, the Tervagon, they got counterattack and poison and uh, managed to wipe out all, all the, the no, destroyers. So the destroyers are gone. What my, my, my 12 orc uh, bikers couldn't do, what, six Termagants did? Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. So, no, like eight. oh, maybe eight of them. Okay, so eight. That's marginally better. 
Um, all right, so we're going to move into bottom of six and see if we can uh, make some push towards some objectives. All right, bottom of turn six. The Carnifex has moved up to grab the objective uh, and uh, shot at the Necron Warriors in here and managed to kill all the Warriors left and actually break the Overlord. So he's running. Um, the Burn Obama dropped its last bomb on the, the broadsides, predictably did nothing. And over here, all the Termagants jumped in on those Warriors and the... the Necron Lord, dropped him down to just a single warrior, um, and he made his leadership test, and uh, two more of the warriors and the Lord stood right back up. So this is a contested objective. We have two being held by the Tyranids, and two being held, I'm sorry, and one being held by the uh, the Tau. So at the moment, the Tyranid Orcs are winning the game. Let's see if the game goes into turn seven. Who's going to roll it, guys? Who rolls it? Go for it. So it does. Four plus, right? I... Pretty sure it goes next turn. <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> Pretty sure Alright, we had started turn 7, but then we realized um, the Necron and Tau really couldn't do enough to knock us off the uh, off of victory. Um, Adam jumped his battle suits in here and shot at the Turvagon. Did manage to kill it, which would have uh, knocked out a bunch of the uh, the Termagants holding it, or fighting in that combat. Even if they lost that and the, the warriors consolidated onto it, um, we still had two objectives, two objectives, but we have... Slay the Warlord, First Blood, and Linebreaker versus their two Slay the Warlords. So we still would have won by a single point. There really was no way they could have come out and won um, by anything. Uh, they, they, they simply just could not have won. Um, so beautifully, uh, beautifully played game, guys. Awesome. Lots of back and forth. Um, yeah, we're going to do some list tweaking, see what we can do. And uh, maybe next time we shoot it, we'll try some uh, different matchups. But uh, yeah, this was, uh, again, a good prep for our Adepticon game. We learned a lot about how each other's armies work and what we plan to do with them. All right, so tune in next time. Thanks a lot.